How's it going everybody? This is Drew with Painless Performance. Today we're working on a 67C10. We're going to be installing our 700R4 lockup kit, part number 60109. The 204R lockup kit, part number 60110, is very similar. Solenoids and pressure switches will be in a little bit different spot, but overall it'll be very, very similar. All right, kit's pretty simple. Um, comes with a new vacuum switch, a case connector so you can replace the factory one if you need to. We have the four pin brake switch, which has a pass through side and a brake switch side. Then we have the solenoid, which actuates the lockup function. And then we have the fourth gear pressure switch. So, Comes with all the wiring you need, plenty of wire to go up inside the cab, which is where this is mounted. Um, all you have to tie into on your factory wiring is a 12 volt ignition power. And drop the pan, you have to either catch or replace the fluid, but we provided a brand new quart gasket. Pretty simple, um, should be able to do it with minimal tools and minimal experience. To start this install process, we're going to take all of the pan bolts off. Pretty simple. Um, leave a couple of them in so you're not dropping the whole pan all at once. Just makes or saves from making a huge mess. Now, typically, this is how you'll find the transmission filter. This one popped out, but we just popped it back in just to show you. They literally just pop right out. Pretty straightforward. You might want to go ahead and replace it, and then on your preference. All right, as you'll see right here, we've got the fourth gear pressure switch. This is one piece that we're going to be replacing. The other is the solenoid up here at the front. We're going to be replacing both of those. So we're going to start by unplugging it. They just slide right off. Kind of a trick to get to. We're going to unplug those. And then this one, I'll have to take this whole wiring harness out of the way. Get it kind of loose. And then there's going to be two bolts here and here. We're going to remove those. And that solenoid will come out of the way. We'll get to installing the new one. We're gonna take our new solenoid and install it in place of the old one, making sure to line the hole up up top. Gotta to get this out of the way. It basically just slides right up in place when you line it all up. Little bitty clip and it's in. We're gonna reuse the factory hardware, the two bolts. Just tighten the solenoid all on up into place. At this point we can actually go ahead and remove all of the old wiring because none of these pressure switches will be used with the new setup. Just unclip them, pull them out of the way. And then all of this wiring will come out down the bottom. This is all no longer used. We're going to remove the old fourth gear pressure switch. That one out of the way. We're gonna take our new fourth gear pressure switch, put it back in its place. Now we're gonna take this red connector, single wire connector with the little U-shaped side. It just slides right onto the pressure switch like the old one. We tuck all this up out of the way. We got our Single pin wire ran out for the plug. We're gonna take this four pin connector and put it to the, connect it to the valve body connector. You gotta make sure you lock the, or line the locking tang up with the locking tang on the body. It slides together. And then this will drop back through 
Make sure you don't pinch the O-ring on it. Drop that in place and you're good to go. We'll keep this tied up out of the way. Just like that. Last step is we're gonna get all the old gasket off. Alright, make sure we don't leave any old material on there. Alright, now that we got that mostly out of the way, we'll get a gasket scraper and get the rest of this little bitty material off. Put the old uh, transmission filter back on it. Put the new gasket and the pan back on it and we'll be done down here. We're gonna take our new cork gasket. You'll have this little notch out that goes on the driver's side. Take, line it up and set it up on our pan. Now after we have all of these tightened up, you're gonna to wanna to go through and not over tighten them, but evenly tighten them. Kind of in a crisscross pattern. Just make sure you get them enough to where you seal the gasket, but you don't want to strip out the holes in the case. Now that we're done underneath, we're going to lower the vehicle down, take care of all the wiring up top. Now that we've done the installation underneath the vehicle, we're going to move up under the dash. What we're going to be doing under here is installing our four pin brake switch and finding a 20 amp fused ignition source to power the switch. If you don't have a, an available 20 amp fused source, you can use a fuse tap or a fuse loop, some way to get 20 amp fused ignition, which is key on power. Then it's gonna to go to one side of your brake switch, then the other side is gonna go out through the firewall through a grommeted hole. You wanna make sure it's grommeted and then we're gonna go out to the vacuum switch underneath the hood. Next, we're gonna install the vacuum switch. We need to find a suitable location to mount it. Um, somewhere close to the engine so you don't have to run a lot of vacuum line, but you also kind of want it to be in the direction where you're gonna run the wiring because this goes in between the brake switch and the transmission itself. On this vehicle, we're gonna mount it to the uh, gas pedal mount assembly. Some of them you can mount them to the back of the cylinder heads, anywhere that it's up and away from the exhaust, away from heat, um, away from any moving parts, just because these are plastic so we don't want to have any issues with it. Now that we've got the vacuum switch mounted, we're going to take our purple wire that comes from the brake switch through the firewall, and we're going to go to the common terminal on the vacuum switch. This is a three terminal vacuum switch. We're only gonna be using two of them. So the installation manual shows which two terminals to use. Make sure you pay attention to that. But we're gonna cut this wire to length, terminate it. We're gonna use the remaining wire to go from the other side of the switch down to the transmission. Next, we're gonna take some vacuum line and connect it from the vacuum switch to a ported vacuum source on the carburetor. That way, everything functions like it should and it'll explain all that in the installation manual as well. Now we're gonna take our four-way connector with the wire from our vacuum switch, plug it in and then we're all done. Now that we've got our transmission connector plugged in on the side of the transmission, all of our connections are made. We need to top off the transmission fluid since we lost it from draining it and double check that everything's buttoned up and go take it for a test drive.